Welcome back to another video. Now, you might be thinking, what in the world is this guy wearing? Well, this is what I wear in winter when sitting at the keyboard gets a little bit too cold. And since it's on theme with today's video, I thought I'd share this with you. So just for fun, I thought I'd revisit a Try Hack Me machine that I solved two or three years ago and see whether I still remember how to solve it. Now, I do actually recall it being quite a fun box and thought this would be a nice break from my usual tutorial style videos. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. All right, so I've just started the machine and looks like it's gonna be up in 50 seconds. So let's go and set up our environment. So I'm gonna CD into here, make a, oops, make a directory called pickle rick and cd into it because I like to keep everything nice and neat and tidy at least I say that but then you know things always go horribly wrong afterwards so we'll just wait for this to load up and I'm going to copy this to the clipboard and then just going to ping it to make sure the machine is up and we're all good Oops. And I'm just going to pull up mouse pad to keep some notes. All right, so let's start with mass scan. So doing a full nmap scan takes quite a long time. So if you want to do lots of ports, so I'm just going to do dash p1265535 and then the target IP and uh, dash dash rate equals 1000 and ton zero. So we'll give this a minute to run and my kitten says hello. And while this is running, I'm gonna guess that HTTP is probably open. So we can come back here and take a look and see what's going on. So when we find a web service, there are a few things that we want to look at. So first of all, we're going to come over to Wappalizer and we see that we have Apache running. So it's probably going to be PHP pages. And we also want to have a quick look at the source, especially in CTFs. And you see instantly that we get this note to self, remember username. So we can just grab this put it into our notes. And then the next thing we want to look for are some common files. So for example, we want to look for robots.txt, which when we find this, this is probably a troll, but we're going to pop this into our notes as well. And then I think since there are no links or anything on this page, what we're going to do is we're going to set up FFUF and do some directory busting. And looks like so far, port 80 and 22. And it looks like my scan has almost finished. So let's just come back in here, come into Pickle Rick, and then FFUF, copy this, this, buzz, word list, user share, word lists. Uh, I think, should we go with big? Maybe just common is fine. Oops. Derb common. And I also, since it's running Apache, I'm going to check for PHP files. And since it's a CTF, I'm going to check for text files and back files and zips. So that seems like a reasonable place to start. This will take a little bit of time to run. Usually while we're doing that, we can take a bit of a closer look to the page. So... Listen, Modi, I need your help. I turned myself into pickle again, and I, this time I can't change back. Okay, and we should also take a look. We have some questions here as well. So this isn't a typical CTF where you just have a user flag and a root or system flag. We actually have to answer these questions. So I assume we're going to have to find these files on the file system, which I vaguely recall doing. We might have to be doing things like uh, using the find commands and uh, using a bit of regex maybe, we'll see. So, so far it hasn't found much apart from assets and denied. So I'm just going to have a quick peek into assets. 
not something that I would usually whoops, prioritize uh, when attacking a box, but since it's a CTF, there's stuff usually kind of kicking around everywhere, so leave no stone unturned. Which is probably why I like CTFs a little bit, is because it does get you to kind of think outside the box a little bit. So just some gifts and things, and we have bootstrap, bootstrap, and jQuery min. Okay, so nothing too exciting there. And the other one was denied.php, so let's take a look at this. Portal login page with a nice picture of a portal. So let's try admin admin. Doesn't work. Let's try some very basic equal injection. Make this a little bit bigger for you. Also doesn't work. Um, I might actually, let's just give this a quick spin on Burp Suites. I'm just gonna capture the request quickly. Oops, I need to turn my proxy on. Come here, and then I just want to copy this. Come back to my terminal, cd, oops, actually let's cancel this one. Come here, and let's vim rec.txt, input this, write this, and then let's just do SQL map dash r request.txt and this is the easiest way in my opinion to just configure SQL map and get it running. So that's going to test for that and then what else do we want to test? We do actually have a username if I recall. So we'll just try this. Try Morty. We can probably set up Hydra to brute force this. Let's just have a quick look, uh, a bit of a closer look at the form. Looks like no, no CSRF tokens or anything. Let's try this one. Ah, and we're in, okay. I thought I vaguely remembered that we didn't have to brute force, so. I do have a, a little bit of an advantage. This isn't the first time I've seen this box, but my memory isn't that good either as well. So kind of poking around trying to figure out prompts myself to remember. So we don't need this anymore, but this is always useful to kind of have running in the background just as a sanity check. And we have this command panel. So let's just do a quick who am I? Dub, 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 data. And then, okay, so let's do Alice. And we can see we have this super secret ingredient. So let's take a look at that. That's probably one of the questions, command disabled. Okay, so let's try less. Ah, and that worked, okay, nice. All right, so we've got the first ingredients, whoops. And then, what do we want to do? We could carry on using this, and we do see this clue.txt. I wonder if Fuff actually picks that up. Let's come back here. No, clearly clue is not in the common word list. So let's just cat user share word lists. Derb common grep clue. Is it in the big one? Ah, interesting, okay, so the word clue is not in either of these word lists. Useful to know. So let's last this one. Look around the file system for the other ingredients. Okay, so let's do which Python? No Python, which Python 3? And we have Python 3. So all I'm going to do is come to payloads all the things. I tend to find the Python shells are a little bit more, maybe higher success rate than the bash reverse shells, but 
I mean, that could be complete rubbish. It's just my experience. So I'm not sure whether it's actually the case. I'm just going to grab this, paste this here, come back, IPA, grab this, drop this in here. We might have to try a few of these, but let's try this one first. And let's do Python 3 because it's Python 3. And then netcat and OVP 4444. And then paste this in here. And hopefully the page hangs. If it does, it means we probably popped a shell and it does indeed hang. So let's come back here and we get a connection, which is awesome. Okay, so I'm just gonna upgrade this quickly. So again, Python 3 dash uh, C imports pty, pty.spawn, bin bash. And looks like we're all good. And we're sitting in this var dub 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 folder. So let's just have a look at the host name. IP 10.10.163.180. We're obviously dub 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 data. It tells us that it's part of the shell. Um, let's take a look at this. So x64, kernel 4.4, .4, AWS instance. Okay, so this is useful to know. ETC pass WD. I'm just going to have a look at the users that exist. So we've got this Ubuntu user. I don't see any other interesting users other than root, obviously, and that's always an interesting user. CD into home. And there's a wreck. Was that in the... Didn't see that. Maybe I'm just blind, but um, I don't see him in etc past wd. Something else that we should always check is sudo dash l. And <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to work for dub 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 data, but we have uh, no password all. So let's just become root, uh, easiest privesque ever. But to be honest, this is really, really important lesson because actually a lot of systems that you pop a shell on when you're doing penetration testing, there will be services or users with passwordless sudo on there. So this is always something to check for and it's super popular in CTF as well. So sudo privileges are really, really important to know uh, and should of course be somewhere near the top of your checklist. So now we've rooted the box, uh, we need to find the two ingredients, I think. So if we come here, so we just need the second and the third. Let's see what's in the root folder. That looks like what we're after. So third ingredient, it's Fleeb juice. Oops, if I can highlight properly, grab this put this in here and then we need the second so hmm. I have a bit of an unstable shell so I don't want to kick off a huge find command because I won't be able to come out of it unless I SSH in I could SSH in as root maybe let's just check around and see what we find we'll find it eventually something that a lot of people don't check is the ops folder so it's empty this time, unfortunately, but there's often stuff in there. And looks like one Jerry tier. And that was easier than I remember, but again, I'm kind of revisiting this for the second time, so obviously that helps a lot and you can solve things much, much faster when you kind of know that you're on the right track instead of going into lots and lots of rabbit holes. And that's actually it for this video. So that was quite a fun and maybe kind of a typical CTF box where you have to think about all of the information you have and try and think a little bit outside the box to solve it. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll catch you next time. 
if you did notice, I was kind of like typing a little bit weirdly and there might have been some background noise and I apologize for that, but let me show you why. I've got two cute little kittens who won't leave me alone, unfortunately, and I don't have the heart to kick them out of my office. Catch you next time.